Today I'm going to show you how to use the coolest module in Pathfinder 2E. In this video I'll be teaching you how to use PF2E HUD from beginning to end so you can use it properly in your online Foundry Pathfinder 2E game. Remember to like and subscribe if you like this sort of content. Let me show you how to use PF2E HUD. The first thing that happens when you load PF2E HUD if your GM enables it is it'll show up this little thing on your screen but we want to fix that immediately. Select your character, in this case it'll be Valeros, and click on this little thing at the bottom left there to set him as your persistent actor if you want to change anything you can always go to settings of pf2e hud and select from manual selection to on token selection if you have multiple tokens for example gms should definitely have this selection enabled once your hud is set to a persistent actor like valeros we're going to go through this and i'm going to show you quickly what each thing is really quickly these buttons on the left this allows you to set or unselect by right clicking or left clicking your persistent actor we'll talk about this button later and this one allows you to show or hide the ui depending on whether you're hovering over it i think it's cool to hide it until you hover over it but it's up to you this will lock the hot bar so you can't mess anything up just in case this will actually mute the volume of foundry this is temporary hp this is your head points this is your ac and you can click on this button to take cover as valeros if needed you can raise a shield if you have a shield by clicking this button this little number is the hardness. This is the shield HP. These are the languages, special senses, immunities, resistances, and weaknesses. These are the saving throws. This is perception, stealth, and athletics. And if your GM quickly asks you to roll a fortitude saving throw, you can just click on the fortitude button here and roll it. That is the quickest way to roll anything I've ever seen. These are the number of hero points you have, whether you're dying or wounded, your level, your speed. I wouldn't touch this. Trust me, and then all these tabs have something in them. We're going to go through this in a second, but that is the basic overview of the icons on the HUD. You might be wondering why it's worth using PF2E HUD instead of using a character sheet. Let me show you why I think PF2E HUD is just that little bit better. Without PF2E HUD, if I want to attack this giant rat, for example, I do have to open up the character sheet and attack, which as a base default is not bad. I'm not disparaging it by any means, but however, with PF2E HUD, you don't really have to open your character sheet anymore. You can just do it from the map, saving precious screen space, for example. But the coolest part about PF2E HUD isn't the little tab at the bottom. It's it's the fact that you can drag and drop stuff from the tab and make a little shortcut in the HUD. Now that I've dragged my longsword down there, all I really have to do is target the rat and then just click on the little sword icon and it'll do the attack roll for me. The HUD has a lot of tabs. We're going to go through each one of them. These are the actions tab. Sort of represents what's here. Everything in the actions tab is in this little tab. And yes, you can drag down anything from the actions tab down into the HUD in case you need to use it. You can also drag the check marks down here if you wanted to use double slide second attack for example just select that from the hud this is the inventory tab same thing just a little easier to access and as always you can drag something from the items to your little hud shortcut bar the spells tab we'll get into in another character we'll skip that for now this is skills for example if i want to gather information i can just drag that on here and if I want to gather information as a basic action, I can just roll that. I guess he's not that good at that. And of course, if I just want to roll like a basic diplomacy check, I just can I can just click on this and it'll roll a basic diplomacy check in chat. This is the extras tab that has a couple of key important things like recall knowledge, a general action, and that'll show up here on the side. I do highly recommend you use this recall knowledge macro general action as opposed to going to the skill tabs and clicking for example, recall knowledge here, because this will just roll a nature check, for example, as opposed to rolling the entire skill set that we have. And then this button right here allows you to switch shortcut sets. You can left click or right click to switch between. If your shortcuts all fill up, you can just go to the next one. Copy user shortcuts in case somebody does it for you. You can just copy it from that user. And I wouldn't hit this button unless you know that you really want to delete every single shortcut. Also checking the spells tab here on Ezrin, we get every single spell and you can just drag and drop, for example, fireball here. And there it is. To clear a shortcut, you just middle click it and it'll go away. And every shortcut has a little different thing if you right click it or control right click it. For example, a long sword can be right clicked to pop out the attack thing. This is also where you can switch from piercing and slashing if you wanted to do that without opening up your character sheet. Or you can control right click it 
to sort of see what a long sword does. The next thing is a healing potion. Right clicking it will show you the edit item window. You can control right click it as well to just give you more information on the healing potion. Same thing with this, although for uh, skill actions, right clicking allows you to use variants. For example, I can use perception to gather information if I wish and control right clicking it gives you the information of gather information. Some things don't have a control right click. This one just right clicking gives you what attack of opportunity is. And then I gave electric arc to Valeros and right clicking it gives you the spell description. Another cool thing about the HUD is you can actually put macros in the HUD. So for example, if I wanna put basic action macros there and not have to use the bar at the bottom, I can just click on it from the HUD there, which is pretty cool. Although this is kind of redundant considering all the skills are right here. Another cool thing you can do from the bottom left here is click on edit avatar and make Valeros look just that little bit better. Save that and it'll look a lot smoother down here at the bottom. That's a long and short of how to use PF2E HUD. Fill it out like this and you'll never have to open your character sheet again. Hey, and if you enjoyed PF2E HUD and think it's a cool module, definitely support the creator, Idol. The coffee link is in my description below. Definitely support him if you like this module. I think it's pretty cool that he did all of this for free. Thank you for watching. Show this to your players, GM if they have any doubts on how to use PF2E HUD and hopefully this helps a little bit in terms of the learning curve. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Pablo. Like and subscribe and watch this video. Toodles.